Nearly 8.30, ladies. You're supposed to be finished on the floor by now. We're not used to coming to work this early. My old man had a fit with his leg up. Had to get his own breakfast. <laughs> if you ask me, it's ridiculous opening the shop at this hour. Who wants to go shopping at half past eight in the morning? Well, one has to experiment. That's why we built the Concord. Oh, hear that, Ethel. He'll have us coming to work on the Concord next. <laughs> Good morning, Captain Peacock. Good morning, Mr. Rumbold. What have you got there? A cup of coffee in what was described at Fred's Caff as a bacon butty. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Mrs. Peacock always got your breakfast. Not at 0600 hours. <laughs> when I tried to wake her up, she turned over and murmured something which sounded remarkably like get knotted. <laughs> Still, I'm sure the early start will pay dividend. <laughs> We've got a customer already. Can I help you, sir? Don't be daft, it's me. <laughs> My dad gave us the lifting on the back of his motorbike. We picked up Mr. Slocum on the way. That's rather dangerous. Three of you on a motorcycle. She was in the sidecar. <laughs> <laughs> when you said he was a TT rider, I thought you meant he didn't drink. <laughs> well, I told you to face the front. <laughs> I couldn't bear to see where I was going. <laughs> oh, it's going to cost me a fortune at Madame Beryl's to get this knot back into shape. Well, at least you're here on time, Mrs. Slocum. Time for what? <laughs> there won't be any customers, you know. And what it's doing to my domestic arrangements? Having a bath at six o'clock in the morning played havoc with my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and he sleeps in the airing cupboard. And the gurgling of the tank woke him up. <laughs> ah, Mr. Granger, reliable as ever. I had a most unpleasant experience. Mrs. Granger hit me over the head with a bottle of bismuth. <laughs> Didn't your wife want to cook your breakfast either? No, but, uh, well, apparently, when I woke her up, she was dreaming that she was on Errol Flynn, Flynn's yacht. Oh. <laughs> was she his girlfriend? No, no, it was much more complicated than that. She was Errol Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> I shall have to sort it all out when I get home. <laughs> ah, well. Only Mr. Humphreys and Mr. Lucas to come. Yes, well, Mr. Humphreys may be a little late. He was going away for the weekend, I believe. Oh, well, I hope we'll all continue to make a special effort to get here on time, because I'm sure that the sales figures resulting from the early opening will fully justify my faith in the new system. Mm -hmm. Oh, no! I'm not joining up. It was the only way I could get from Newcastle upon Tyne at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> People are very kind to the services, you know. <laughs> you were lucky to get away with it. You know, you should have the name of your ship on your hatband. If the naval police had spotted that, you'd have got into trouble. I'd have got into worse trouble if they'd seen what was on before. <laughs> what was that? Kiss me quick. <laughs> The umbrella was peculiar. Oh, yes, but when they questioned it, I said it was to keep my hair dry in the fair aisle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm surprised you didn't wear the whole uniform. Oh, well, I used to, but people kept wanting to touch me collar for luck. <laughs> I bet you met a lot of nice girls that way. I did. <laughs> Not to mention a roving reporter, a trendy bishop, a string vestite, and a dustman with a very interesting tale to tell. Ah, <laughs> oh, places, everybody. Oh, Mrs. Slocum, uncover your bust, please. <laughs> your counter bust, Mrs. Slocum. We're open for business. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> um, Captain Peacock, I, I don't want to be a telltale, but uh, our Mr. Lucas is not in yet. Mm. Isn't that uh, correct, Mr. Humphreys? Yes, that's correct, Mr. Granger. <laughs> I'm quite aware of the situation, but you did write to bring it to my attention. I just hope he has a good excuse. <laughs> Good morning, Captain Peacock. <laughs> you know, you're never going to believe this. 
<laughs> but my poor old crippled mother overslept this morning and she forgot to wake me up. <laughs> then I missed the bus, so she had to give me a lift in her invalid carriage. <laughs> I kept telling her to put her foot down, a good one, that is, and then the police stopped her for speeding and they gave her a breathalyzer. <laughs> well, now, unfortunately, she only had time to cook my breakfast this morning and all she had was a quick liqueur chocolate on the way out. One that, and it, was, it was still on her breath when she blew up the bag, you see. And by the time I'd been to Bow Street and bailed her out, well, I was very nearly late. You are late, Mr. Lucas. That's because I met young Mr. Grace on the ground floor. Ah, good morning, Mr. Lucas, he said. How clever are you to get here on time? Well, by the time I told him how I was very nearly late, I was. <laughs> well, go on, you can ask him. But at least you could have shaved before you left home. No, I've been shaving all morning, sir. And here's the batteries, you see, they're getting a bit low. My mother uses them during the week and her deaf aid. <laughs> How did it sound? Wonderful. <laughs> Makes Doctor Who's adventures seem quite normal. <laughs> and it's much better than the one about you helping to deliver a baby for a titled lady on a bicycle that had to remain anonymous. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, here we are, 8.30 in the morning. When's it all going to start, then? When's the rush going to happen? Well, to quote Mr Rumbold, the creative platform that this idea is built upon is based on the premise that by opening earlier, we shall catch customers on the way to work. All we're likely to sell at this hour of the morning are monkey nuts. Well, if you ask me, people on their way to work won't have time to buy anything. Good morning, sir. Are you being... Oh, you are. <laughs> Check suit on the dummy in the window, 32 pounds, size 38. Can I help you, sir? Well, that's it. <laughs> oh, Check this. There's a new line and very popular indeed, you know. It's pre <laughs> and 50% man made fibre, and then you. Not when I'm sitting, Mr. Humphreys, please. They've uh, sold Mr. Granger, he's gone. <laughs> But I, I never told him the thieves would ride up with where. Glass of water for Mr. Granger. <laughs> okay. uh, good morning, sir. Uh, gloves. Size. It's seasonable weather. <laughs> large. Yes. Yeah. Colour? No. Black. One large black. Uh, huh. Huh. Fits? How much? Five pounds. Right. I see that you're interested oh. in gloves, sir. <laughs> <laughs> is interested in gloves, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> it's all over, Mr. Granger. <laughs> oh, no. Hello, menswear. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> it's for you, it's a lady. Well, there's no need to sound so surprised. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Mother. <laughs> yes, of course I'm all right. <laughs> she came to stay with me last night, found that I wasn't in bed. <laughs> yes, dear. Yes, well, I put my pyjamas on the bolster so that you'd think it was me in bed when you arrived. <laughs> well, how did you know it wasn't? <laughs> well, I don't sleep with Paddington Bear anymore. <laughs> His Wellingtons were so cool. <laughs> no, 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 I've been hitchhiking dressed as a sailor. <laughs> for a party. <laughs> Was it for a party the last time as well? <laughs> Mother, now I am over 21. Well over. <laughs> yes, of course I'm still your little boy. <laughs> no, I haven't changed a bit. Well, not much. <laughs> well, I can't help it if I'm popular, can I? Oh, that reminds me. If a man rings up with a Scottish accent, you're the cleaner and you've never heard of me. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I don't owe him any money. I don't do him anything. <laughs> what do you mean there's someone coming up the garden path in a kilt? <laughs> well, look, lock the door and hide in the cupboard. <laughs> I'll phone you before I leave here. Whatever you do, don't open the door unless it's a young policeman carrying a rolled umbrella. And if I can borrow a helmet from the toy department, that'll be me. <laughs> well, take the phone into the cupboard with you. Bye. <laughs> It's all go at your place, isn't it? <laughs> and it's only Monday. <laughs> this early morning opening seems to be working. They've taken almost 40 quid over there, and that's before they've unlocked the till. That won't happen over here, Miss Browns. Shopping is an art, and women like to take their time to assess the goods and make a decision. I mean, men just see something they want and grab hold of it. <laughs> Did you notice? Yes, I had. It happened to me in the pub last night. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
there was this bloke in this open neck shirt and a hairy chest with big muscles, and the pub was jam packed, and I was wearing. Well, d d just a minute. How old was this man? <laughs> oh, he must have been 40 if he was a day. Oh, quite young, really. <laughs> I was wearing my skin tight jeans. You know, those ones with the false patch just there. Blimey, he says, there's a stitch going, grabs hold and won't let go. Oh, just imagine. Go on. Well, I didn't, I didn't want to shout and make a fuss or anything. No know. one doesn't, does one. So what did you do? Well, I ordered a large gin and tonic with a lot of ice, put it on his bill and pulled it down the front of his trousers. <laughs> Got his hand off. <laughs> Don't some men take terrible liberties? Where exactly is this? <laughs> Good morning, madam. Can I help you? Hats. Uh, ladies. Hurry. Uh, where would madam like to be directed first? The hats or the ladies? <laughs> no, no. Ladies' hats. Uh, Wedding. Uh, counter. There. <sighs> Good morning, madam. Not a very nice morning, is it? But still... A guest at a wedding. Uh, Ten thirty. Need a hat. Oh, do hurry, please. I'm late. A millinery occasion, Miss Brahms. <laughs> this way. Oh, this is the last one of these. It was a very exclusive <sighs> line. Oh, that does suit, madam. Mm -hmm. Oh, that does suit, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Dust suit. <laughs> oh, that dust suit, man. <laughs> oh, that dust suit, man. <laughs> oh, that dust suit, man. Mrs. Slocum, your needle's stuck in the groove. <laughs> I just can't make up my mind. Uh, how much are they? They're all five pounds. I take the lot. One, two, three. Four, that's a uh, twenty pounds. Right, thanks. Well, did you ever see anything like that? What was that? They ain't fifty ninety. It was probably the ten thirty bride. <laughs> uh, yes, very satisfactory. Are you reverting to the Queen pudding, sir? No. <laughs> No, the remarkable jump in the sales figures this morning. It's very gratifying when one plays a hunch and it comes off. Yes, sir. The sort of thing that made Churchill great. The right decision taken at the right time. <laughs> Turning defeat into victory. It's an ability I put to very good use in the war, you know, in the army. There must be times when you miss the catering course. <laughs> I must say the staff don't look too happy. I think we're all just getting over the early start, sir. Still, they'll soon settle down. Mm. How's your queen pudding? It hasn't quite fulfilled its promise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It promised to be awful and it's disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. It lacks definition. It's more like distemper. <laughs> what is custard? Well... Real custard is made with new laid eggs, fresh, creamy milk, and refined caster sugar. Mm. <laughs> this lot's made of edible starch, colouring, flavouring, and monosonium glutamate. <laughs> How do you know? Well, the library was shut the other day, so I read the packets in my pantry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no good. I'll just have to eat it. It's been such a long time since breakfast. I hope we don't go on with this early morning experiment. Yeah, well, the way I see it, they're bound to. How do you arrive at that hypothesis? <laughs> I beg your pardon? I won't say that again. <laughs> My teeth are caught up with this plastic. <laughs> I mean, it stands to reason, doesn't it? I mean, look, look at the sales we made in the first half hour. I mean, we were a hundred quid up this morning. Well, we weren't far short. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we go on like this at the end of the day and we're up that much, well, I mean, this early morning start could become a way of life. Well, if it does, I shall have to change my milkman. <laughs> <laughs> well, this morning was the first time I'd met him face to face and it was a very nasty experience. <laughs> I think he'd been to see one of those films, you know, Confessions of a Milkman. <laughs> if he hadn't had his hands full of raspberry yoghurt, I wouldn't have been here to tell the tale. <laughs> <laughs> Monday. 
I don't know. What do we take last Monday, Mr. Granger? Oh, don't, don't ask me. My memory is like a, like a, like a, like, like a sieve. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Yes, Lou. <laughs> well, all we got to do is find out what we did take last Monday and then keep below it. But old Jackie has keeps all the figures in his office. Well, someone will have to have a peep. How? Well, listen, someone will have to get him out of his office. And then while he's out, one of us can nip in and nip through his files. It's just the sort of thing that Bulldog Drummond would have done when he was trying to outwit Oscar Peterson. You mean Carl Peterson? Oscar Peterson plays the piano. Oscar, he didn't play the piano when Bulldog Drummond was there. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm making a dice out of this sugar cube. Now, listen, we'll throw it. Whoever gets the smallest number does the deed. Oh, isn't it exciting? Mr Granger, you go first. What is this? It's just, I'll tell you, explain later. Now, just put the sugar in the cup and shake it. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Slocum, listen, everything's fixed. Now, look, you phone up Rum Rumbold and get him out here and leave the rest to me. Out and Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Would you connect me with Mr. Rumbold, please? Rumbold here. You don't know me. <laughs> I, I spotted you at the squash club last night. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, what is the nature of your inquiry? I was in the gallery and I couldn't take my eyes off you. <laughs> <laughs> to whom am I speaking? Oh, you wouldn't have noticed little me. I'm only 21 with long blonde hair and a 40-inch butt. <laughs> but our eyes did meet briefly for a second when you leapt in the air and hit that winning shot. You have terribly exciting knees. <laughs> uh, hold on. Uh, have I got this right? You're 40 with a 21-inch bust. No, it's the other way round. <laughs> What's the other way round? <laughs> oh, never mind. No, the fact is that I made inquiries and I found out where your place of work was and I must speak to you because I've got this thing about bald-headed men. But I'm happily married. Well, I've got this thing about happily married bald-headed men. <laughs> well, uh, you're not alone in that, you know. I'm coming to see you in your office. Good heavens, are you in the building? Yes, I'm in the restaurant. More tea, dear. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. You can't come down here. Mrs. Slocum, we do not make personal calls in the firm's time. Neither do we contravene the Trades Descriptions Act. Here he comes. Well, go on then. Everything all right, sir? Huh? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. I was just uh, counting the customers. <laughs> well, at the moment, we have one there and one over there. <laughs> Good. I'll uh, make a note of that. Carry on, Captain Peacock. <laughs> Carry on, Captain Peacock. I am carrying on, sir. <laughs> this is what I do. What, all day? All day. <laughs> I'll make a note of that as well. <laughs> Fingers. <laughs> I heard the phone ringing, so I came in to answer it in case it was urgent, Mr. Rumbold. Well, why haven't you answered it? Yes. <laughs> well, I suddenly thought to myself, perhaps it's a private call and Mr. Rumbold won't want me to answer it, I thought. <laughs> yes, well, uh, answer it now. Ask them if they're 21 with long blonde hair and a 40-inch bust. <laughs> 21 with long blonde hair and a 40 inch bust. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 80 with short white hair and um, hardly any bust at all. I've got it. Well, quick before Peacock gets back from his break. Now, what was it? Last Monday, 3.25. And what have we taken so far? Well, I'm up to 170 already. And we're 150. Well, it's already half past two. Well, any suggestions? 
couldn't we close? No, but you've given me an idea. We could stop selling. Stop selling? How can you stop selling if people come in to buy? It's quite easy. Put ha. them off. Ha. Well, that's easy. Instead of pushing things, you do the opposite. Come on. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. May I help you? No, your assistant is attending to my wife. She's buying an evening dress. An evening dress? Uh, about what price range? Ninety-five pounds. <laughs> Ninety-five... Excuse me. <laughs> yes, Mrs Slocum. How's the sale going? Oh, she looks lovely in it. If you sell it, we're done. Oh, she likes it. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Do come out when you're ready, madam. Well, Henry, what do you think? Well, what do you think? You're paying for it. You've got to wear it. I think <laughs> madam looks quite enchanted. It's a delightful garment. I'm afraid Madam's husband isn't quite so sure, and I'm inclined to agree with him. <laughs> well, I, I didn't say I didn't like it. Oh, no, 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 no. You must speak your mind. I think Madam carries it very well. Oh, thank you. Well, what do you think about the colour, sir? Well, well, now you've mentioned it, it is a bit bold. <laughs> I think Madam can get away with a bold colour. Well, she'll certainly be noticed. <laughs> Uh, may I inquire what the function is? Uh, it's the firm's dance. Oh, you'll be the belle of the ball. And is Sir the managing director? Uh, no, I'm manager of accounts. <laughs> One has to be careful not to outshine one's superior's wives at these do's. On the other hand, a man is often judged by his wife. I mean, it doesn't pay to be too flamboyant when you're handling the firm's money. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that the gentleman has been dipping in the till. Well, then how can he afford a dress like that? <laughs> I've been very careful all my life. Don't call pay £95 for a dress for one occasion. Careful. But if Madam is happy, then no price is too great. He's not doing it for her. He's pandering to his own ego. Showing off in front of the boys. It was your idea, Henry. I'd sooner have had a washing machine. <laughs> There you are, you see. And why aren't you getting one? Cos he can't show it off at a dance. <laughs> if you want a washing machine, I'll buy you a washing machine. I do want a washing machine. Well, well take off that stupid dress for a start. <laughs> you look like a great big stuffed turkey. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible thing to say. Oh, we're getting the truth now, aren't we? You never loved me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, he no. did. And she turns the waterworks on. And you don't go to the dance alone. Oh, oh, I shall go to the dance, but I shan't go alone. <gasps> oh, the truth's coming out now, isn't it? It's the girl on the contometer. It all adds up. <laughs> Conclusion. Uh, she doesn't need a 95 pound dress to show herself off. I don't need a 95 pound dress either. I hate it. Oh, my God. I hate it. <laughs> we'll have to charge you for that, you know. You just ruined a perfectly good dress. You've just ruined a perfectly good marriage. Just like crossroads, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Mr. Grace, this is indeed an honour, sir. Ah, oh, where's the been? I've been waiting for you. Oh, checking with taking, sir. The new scheme was going very well until this afternoon, and then. For some inexplicable reason, they dropped off. What dropped off? <laughs> the, the takings. We're still £20 short on last Monday's total. Yes, well, I can't go back on my word. If, if the figures don't improve, uh, the scheme's off. Well, we're, we've still got a little time to go, sir. Yes, well, at the end of the day, I come back here to my office and put the figures here on my desk. Excuse me, sir. This is not your office. This is my office. This is my desk. Oh, uh, that's your wife, then. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank God for that. <laughs> Five minutes to go. I don't think I could live through another day like this. I've lost eight pounds in commission. <laughs> I thought it was a bit cheeky, mind, the way you told that Arab that you thought they were Jewish umbrellas. <laughs> Mr. Granger, Mr. Humphreys, customer. Oh, blimey. If he wants anything more than the shirt stud, shoot him. Leave him to me. 
Can I help you, sir? Thank you. I'd like a raincoat. Oh. We don't sell many of those these days, sir. What do you want it for? To keep out the rain. <laughs> well, we haven't got any that'll keep out the rain. We've got one or two that might strain it for you. <laughs> if you really want to keep out the rain, you ought to go to the yachting department and get yourself an oil skin. I do use an umbrella. And I'd like the raincoat I saw in the window for £28. Ah, that range has been marked up to 40 Oh. Oh, I see. Sorry, I can't apply. That's all right. Good <laughs> <laughs> well done, Mr Humphrey. <laughs> Look out. <clears throat> Excuse me, why can't I have that one in the window that's marked 28? Yeah, what size are you, sir? 40. Ah, uh, well, that's a 34, you see. That's why it's going cheap. <laughs> oh. I see. <laughs> Well done, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> well, I suppose if they've all gone up, that's all there is to it. I'll take one for 40 pounds. Raincoat rail, Mr. Lucas. Oh, it's all right. Just wrap it up. I'll take it. No, say, so must try it on. It's more than my job's worth to let you leave the department without trying it on. Oh. Here we are. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> there. <laughs> 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 Just look at that terrible stitching. Mm. How could they let it out of the workroom like that? Mm. You may well ask, Mr Lucas. Well, I have to ask, Mr Humphreys. <laughs> I mean, we have a sacred trust towards our customers. Look at that. Uneven sleeves. <laughs> well, I, I always have this trouble. My arms are uneven. <laughs> I'm used to it, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, let's consider the colour, then. Now, you can't wear that colour with that colour hair. <laughs> well, of course, the gentleman could change the colour of his hair. I agree with you, but my wife insists I wear clothes this colour. Well, the gentleman could change his wife. Yeah, I tried to, but she didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> now it'll do fine. Go on, wrap it up. Despite the fact it's the wrong colour? <laughs> and it isn't waterproof? Yes, just wrap it up. And I must say, I'm really most impressed with your honesty. One would think you didn't want to sell me an overcoat. <laughs> and that's because you've got a fat face, piggy eyes, <laughs> and a pimple on your nose. <laughs> <laughs> you young salesmen just don't know how not to sell clothes. <laughs> Stranger, are you free? Yes, I'm free, Captain Peter. A customer has just complained to me that you said he had a fat face, Piggy eyes and a pimple on his nose. <laughs> Captain Peacock, am I the sort of man who would tell a customer that he had a fat face, piggy eyes and a pimple on his nose? No, of course not, Ernest. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 